Hello, this is Z Scott for Simply Learn, and today's topic is Google Analytics. During this session, you're going to learn how to create a new Google Analytics account if you do not already have one. And the way you do this is you go to uh, Google, let me pull this up here, you go to google.com slash analytics, and you click, you click on analytics here, it's loading here and then what you want to do is you want to click on the admin tab and you want to create a new account as you can see I just walk through here you want to put your account name here your website name here and you also want to be very careful when you are putting in your uh, domain name or your URL your universal reload resource locator here you want to make sure you put in the proper um, uh, prefix whether it's uh, HTTP or HTTPS you can get this information by um, looking in the URL bar at the top as you can see here this is uh, the URL here you also want to make sure you select a category and your time zone everything else and then you want to get a tracking ID now the the tracking ID, let me go back to the one that I'm going to use. Your tracking ID is where you uh, grab it from here on tracking info. I'm not going to go into my tracking ID for this one here, but um, going back to uh, the slides, uh, we, we've uh, went over how to create a new Google Analytics account. So that and then setting up a property and then um, following the instructions to set up the web tracking code. Uh, once you've created your uh, Google Analytics account, you want to make sure that you properly copy the, the code snippet and you want to paste that into the header of your website. Now, if you're using either a WordPress site or a Shopify platform or a few other website content management systems, there's already a place, a designated place that you can actually paste this code and the content management system will properly um, give the syntax that you need for uh, your website. Um, there are a few ways to collect page tracking data. You can add the Google Analytics tag, the Universal Analytics to your website container using um, the Google Tag Manager, which you can also access from uh, the login that I showed you before, the, the google.com slash analytics. You can see the Tag Manager login right here. Um, this is loading here. And then you can just set up an account and follow the, the directions that you see here. Um, Google Tag Manager is great because it, it automates uh, the propagation of tags throughout your site. And it just makes it easier to, to track, to make changes, roll changes out to your site, and also to implement the code tracking directly into your site. Now, you can also, as I mentioned before, implement the tracking code directly into the HTML of every page of your website. Now, if you have a website that is HTML, purely HTML driven with no content management system, you're going to have to insert the tracking code directly yourself. However, if you're using WordPress, or Shopify, there's typically places within the theme where you can um, put that information. Now, the, the whole purpose of um, Google Analytics is to get data to help you make better decisions and to improve the user experience of your website so that um, your customers will want to come and buy again and again, and new people who come to your site will want to buy and start um, patronizing your website. Now, one way to attract the effectiveness of your 
uh, user experience and your products is through the use of a goal template. Now, if you uh, take a look here, uh, let me grab this one here. Um, you can go to your admin panel again, and you'll see here, I'm going to highlight this so you can see, I'm going to spotlight this, there's a, a goals here. If you go to admin on the new um, uh, uh, account that you've created, you can go to goals, and then uh, it's under the view, as you can see here. And when you go to goals, they actually have some templates here. So I actually have um, one goal here um, to create a new goal. All you want to do is click the red button that says new goal and pick from one of the choices that you have here. You can either um, track orders that are placed, um, account new accounts that people create on your website. Um, you can measure engagement if you know people um, uh, click on your social media buttons on your website. Um, you can track how people you know add to cart. Um, just to give you an example, I can do uh, do an example of uh, the social connect. So you select that one, and then you uh, I want to call this. I'm gonna call this. Uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm call that Facebook clicks, and I want to grab the Oops, I put in the wrong. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I have the right, you want to make sure you have the right um, URL there. So I grab the right URL, and so you want to say that this is say the value is equal to I'm gonna say begins with action begins with whoop, paste. And I want to verify this goal. Uh, let me. This one is set up properly. I can just walk through this one. So this one is for placing an order, and the goal description is um, a thank you, and then the details I put in the destination equals to um, checkout slash thank you, and when you verify this goal, you'll see that there was a 1.56 conversion rate based on the data from the past seven days. So you know that this is a good goal, and you can continue to track this information. Now, going back, um, there's, we talked about the different goal categories. We have revenue, acquisition, inquiry, engagement, um, a destination goal, like the one that um, was successfully set up, basically tracks how many people, what percentage of the people on your site go to that page, successfully land on that page as their destination. And so, I know from the architecture of the website that that thank you page, let me go back to it here, um, that this thank you page right 
here is the destination for those who successfully complete a purchase. So that is um, the goal that I was tracking there. Now event goals triggered when a user does something specific like download a PDF or start a video, um, pages, uh, the amount of pages that people um, visit um, is another goal that you can track and also how long they've stayed on um, the website. Now, this is really cool because you can really capture even more data from uh, visitors to your websites using uh, Google Analytics, and this is through what we call the Google Analytics URL Builder. Now, the Google Analytics URL Builder allows you to track um, the source, whether it's a uh, search engine, um, social media, um, or any other site that a newsletter, an e email that you're, you're using. So as you can see here, the source is the, is the referrer, and then you have the medium, and then um, the, ter the terms that you want to track. So say you want to track how popular um, a certain new product is or one product versus another, you can actually track that information using um, the Google Analytics URL builder. So um, the key metrics to monitor are really important. So um, I want to show those next and uh, this is um, one um, project that I'm working on right now and as you can see um, the sessions have went from uh, 350 in a month to 8,183 and there are uh, out of those 8,183, 8,140 are unique visitors and out of those uh, 8,140 unique visitors they have viewed a total of 9,455 pages on the website. Now if you look at um, the pages per session um, the pages have went from two to one page per session and the average duration is very low and then we have uh, a, a bounce rate that has increased so this this data tells you as an analyst as an SEO um, person that there's traffic coming to your site that is not 100% um, the target demographic because the the amount of time that they're staying on the site now if you I can show you the difference here um, the 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 bounce rate here on another project that I'm working on is a lot lower it's, uh, 46 point eight percent you have a lot less sessions um, a smaller number of users, a high number of page views, so it's about almost five pages per session that people are viewing. So you can see, um, depending on the different um, vertical, you can have different um, issues to resolve. And Google Analytics is really great for highlighting um, the things that need to um, be addressed and tweaked on the within the SEO strategy of your website. Now, um, things that are really, uh, really cool to see is uh, this is like a, a decision or a traffic tree. Um, you can access this in your uh, Google Analytics. And uh, let me go to uh, your tree maps here. This is a and Let me go back to oh user slow this is the one I wanted to look at 
so you can see the user flow. This is very similar. Let me change the. So you can see from here, you can see the different. Um, this is an example of. Uh, where people are coming from, how they travel through um, the site. This particular map that I um, picked up, it has the, the country with starting pages and it just drills down and drills down. Um, this is um, similar, uh, the screenshot here. So Google Analytics is really helpful because you can slice and dice the, the data in, in many, many different um, ways. Now the next part that we're going to talk about is qualitative data. This is the data that is uh, more, I like to say, touchy-feely or uh, data that tells a story. So uh, the type of uh, tools that you can um, use, well, we're going to talk about a few of those, but qualitative data is best obtained from visitors to your site through surveys and polls and there's you know three three questions that you want to answer with your 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 data and remember people have short attention spans so you don't want to ask too many questions um, so you want to stick to things like why are you here were you able to complete complete your task if not why not why did you you know come to the site Questions like that are really cool. And then from um, this data, you can also calculate the net promoter score, which basically answers the question of uh, uh, referral. It helps to, to quantify the probability that a visitor to your site would indeed refer um, your company or your products or services to someone else, as you can see here. Now, one of the tools that's really great, uh, another uh, low-cost tool is called Qualaroo. Now, this enables event-triggered surveys on your site. And this is an example here of what that survey looks like to the user as a pop-up on your website. So in order to set up a Qualaroo survey, what you want to do is you want to um, go to the website and then you want to name your survey. You want to pick your question. How likely is it that you would recommend this blog, this website, or this product or service to a friend or colleague? You can word it as appropriate for your, your needs, your business needs. And then you want to Make sure it's required. Required for a hundred percent. One hundred percent of your visitors. And you can also target how they came to your site in order to see the pop-up. So one thing you want to make sure is that you have, you don't want to display the survey before 30 seconds because um, 30 seconds is uh, typically, if a person's going to be on your site for uh, 30 seconds or more, it's not a bounce, and you want to make sure you don't have any um, data that you're collecting from people who aren't your ideal um, client. So um, the next thing is uh, you, you want to... don't want to be too too uh, persistent about it um, I know some of us as marketers we want um, 
things to be shown until a visitor provides a response. However, um, you know, I would uh, don't want to be too pushy. So, so here's an example of um, the responses um, given on that uh, question. Were you able to find the information you were looking for? In summary, caller rules is a simple way to, to run, you know, really short surveys on your site to either um, collect customer service related data or to ascertain what your website's net promoter score is being the probability that people will refer your website to other um, colleagues or friends. Now the next tool I want to talk about is a tool Web Engage. You can go to webengage.com and you can, uh, as you can see here is the home page here, and you can also uh, use this tool to, to gather qualitative data from your website visitors. So when you're setting up a Web Engage uh, survey, what you want to do is, is fill out, you know, uh, the name of the survey, the email that you want the feedback um, to go to, and when you're when you're setting up a web engage survey, you want to really let me go back to that. You want to you know gather the information. This, this is the web engage form uh, where your user, your visitors can put in their name, um, their email, what kind of feedback they have, if they're happy, sad, etc., and any message um, that they have for you. This is the, the web engage tool. Now the next tool that you can also use is the Google Consumer Surveys. Now this tool can be accessed through um, the Google form tool. Um, I believe I have, yeah, I set up one here. Um, when you're setting up a uh, Google um, survey, you want, you can go to uh, Google forms and uh, select surveys and it'll take you to the screen that you see here. And uh, this this tool is pretty cool. It costs a little bit of money, as you know some of the tools do, but it's not you know astronomical. It's not you know twenty five dollars a, a answer or anything like that. So it's very affordable. Google Consumer Surveys also allows you to create satisfaction surveys for your site. And as you can see here, I want to highlight this so you can see spot like this, you can get these uh, the survey inserted onto your site to gather um, more qualitative data from your website visitors. So this is a, a closer view of that survey, that Google survey. What, if anything, do you find frustrating or unappealing about this website? You can ask your visitors that and yeah, Google standard survey um, is a powerful uh, tool for you to gather the qualitative data that you need in order to get the feedback you need from your uh, website visitors. Now you can also set up a free website satisfaction survey as well by just um, copying the default survey there, copying that code 
and putting that code snippet on your site. So remember, you can get a free uh, survey using Google Consumer Surveys by using the default website satisfaction survey. Just want to make sure you get that point. And so the code snippet that goes on your site is provided by Google for you to use on your site. And you can also use this tool for mobile, uh, mobile devices as well, which is really cool. Now, in conclusion, you know, surveys are important because they explain why people either love your product or believe it needs improvement. And the best survey asks only three questions. You want to limit to, to very uh, few questions. And there are many low to no cost tools for surveys. You have Google Survey. They have a default one. If you want to do a customized one, um, that does cost a little bit. And then there's also the, the low cost Web Engage and Qualaroo that we covered earlier. Now, this next session section is about experimentation and testing. Um, the benefits of testing is very, very um, important because uh, your, your, your website or your mobile application is the testing environment. And in this uh, testing environment, the, the customer can give you information about what works and what does not work. Now, testing also allows you to, to be really creative. Um, you can test colors, you can test fonts, you can test placement, images, many things to, to increase your conversion rate. And then once you find what works, you can scale very quickly. You can scale out those improvements and really bump up your, your, your cash flow and your bottom line. So back in the day, in the past, uh, circa, you know, 1999, 2000, you know, website design was really based on cool ideas and what we like to call hippo, the highest paid person's opinion. And there really were not a lot of tools uh, available to help you um, create the best um, customer experience or ways to measure um, those recommendations. And, you know, the, the thing about technology is a lot of the things that worked many, many years ago, um, even a year ago, online become obsolete and don't work. So, you know, the half-life of good ideas are very short online. And so that's why it's very, very important to be very strategic and methodolic and, and deliberate about how you roll out changes and track them. And this is what's so great about um, testing. Um, hypothesis testing um, and statistics is, is where you uh, make an assumption about a certain attribute of your website. Maybe you make a certain as assumption about um, your price point or your shop now button placement or your uh, the colors that you use. So, I mean, there's many different things that you can make a hypothesis about and then um, you want to test it. So basically, you know, to really uh, simplify this, it's like if this independent variable, then this the this dependent value variable will cause this change. So if I put use, you know, Calibri font, then uh, my sales will increase. So just to give you a, a hypothetical example. And so here you have with A-B testing, you have um, those the A, the B option. So may, maybe I'm testing, you know, impact font versus 
uh, Calibri. And um, my website A is uh, a, a certain font is the Calibri and Okay, and so as I was saying before, um, say version A is Calibri, version B is Impact. So you can see here in this different um, scenario, Calibri, if, if that was the version A, that would have had the biggest impact, the most positive um, conversion aspect. So A-B testing just helps to remove the speculation of the highest paid person in the room to basically put the hands into the, the consumer and to find out directly from them what they want to see, what urges them to purchase, what urges them to subscribe, what urges them to download, um, what urges them to give them your email, whatever the case may be. So, the great things about A-B testing is that it uses existing resources, it's very quick to get started, and it really sets the stage for even more complex testing. Um, the, the cons is you have less control over external factors, and it's very limited to very small and simple changes, like I said before, like an image or a font or a certain color or a certain layout, or even um, a phraseology that you use. Certain words convert better than others. Now, multivariate testing is a way to test multiple variations of multiple factors all at the same time. And in an A-B testing, you need to test each of those changes one after the other and you also need a certain amount of traffic before the test is significant. Um, testing and individual factors may give one result, but taken collectively, the best combination need not be one of the individual best factors. As you can see here from the examples, um, you have a different tie color, you have a different um, box color, and different headlines. So this gives you kind of um, a, a pictorial representation of the different uh, scenarios that I spoke about earlier. Now, multivariate testing allows you to see the impact of different combinations of changes all at once. So you can change any aspect of a web page and see um, how many different permutations um, people gravitate to which ones um, convert, and so here you go. It's the number of variations on factor A versus the number of va variations on factor B and the number of variations on factor N. So, so if you have four factors with four variations each, then you, ha you have uh, 256 permutations. Now, the pros of using this this technique, the multivariate testing, is that you can test very um, a, a large number of things all at once, and it's you know a good way to overcome IT limitations, and it's faster to to bring more changes quickly. However, this kind of testing requires really high traffic. It, it requires thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of hits, visitors to your site in order to um, really have data that has um, relevance and value. And with something like, another thing is that um, there's a tendency to optimize for smaller changes and ignoring um, the bigger ones. And the Lastly, this isn't the best for every niche. Now, the next section, section we are going to discuss is competitive intelligence. This is a uh, 
something that I really uh, get a kick out of as a digital marketer is looking at what other people are doing. So competitive intelligence is, is often about benchmarking. It's about um, putting your organization's performance in context. Um, another uh, way people call um, competitive uh, intelligence is kind of when you do a SWOT analysis and you focus on the T, the threats. However, you know, competitive intelligence is, is limited and it can empower you or paralyze you. So when you're benchmarking against competitors, you can definitely use insight on their performance to your advantage. So um, you can look at uh, what I really like to look at is their, their search terms. Um, the kind of traffic they have to their site, the average, excuse me, time that uh, people are using on their site, the bounce rate, how many unique visitors. You can really grab a lot of this, this information. And even though it's, it's tempting to ask questions like, like what's a good conversion rate, what's an acceptable bounce rate, it really depends on your website, the vertical, and a lot of other factors. So this, this kind of uh, information is, is very important to, uh, to use wisely. Now one way of benchmarking I love to use and this is amazing and it always helps to add momentum to a marketing campaign is to establish your baseline and track your improvement over time and you can use um, metrics such as traffic visitor demographics average time on site and uh, all of these are available through uh, simple online tools about your competitors and so to check those tools reliabilities, you can compare your own um, data with how, you know, tool reports uh, the same. So you can, there's a lot of ways that you can um, get data and know whether or not it really, it, it works. So one really good thing is to, to assess your, your competition using their technological footprint. One tool that you can um, use is called uh, Built With. You can use builtwith.com to um, perform a competitive analysis. And then you can also use um, Compete. That's another um, tool that you can use to gather data on your competition. And Compete is actually really good because it gives you um, Alexa ranking, it gives you, you know, uh, monthly visitors to the site, it gives you um, bounce rate and a bunch of other great um, data points. So as you can see there and highlighted in the yellow, you can put in the name of your competitor's website and then you can uh, pull their 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 data right there, as you can see, uh, site summary for GettyImages.com. Now you can also look at uh, the incoming uh, visitors. And we also talked about the statistics earlier on Google Analytics where we talk about the number of page views, the number of visits, and there's also Compete has its own ranking system as well called Compete Rank. And as you can see on the right, you can also see the phrases by which uh, people are searching for GettyImages.com. And when you put in your competitor's uh, website into compete.com, you can also pull this data on your competitors as well. 
So there we have the keywords and the incoming traffic from the various sources. So you can see here that Getty Images has the majority of its traffic coming from Google, followed by Yahoo, followed by Bing, followed by Facebook, YouTube, and uh, WeCare.com and AOL.com, which is, you know, it's a mix of search engines and social media uh, channels as well. Twitter is there at the bottom. You also have uh, outgoing traffic from the site as well. Then you have your 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 demographics by age, by income, and by gender. This is all on compete.com. Now, the next step is to compare your performance to your competitor's performance. And you can, you can do that by um, using the compare sites tool within compete.com, as you can see highlighted here. And this is really cool because you can actually compare the traffic, the unique visitors. So you can see the green. I'm going to highlight this so you can see it. See the green here. This is Getty, Getty Images. See if you follow the red highlight dot here. That's Getty Images. And then the orange you can see is another um, competitor is iStockPhoto.com. And so you can just imagine if you go to compete.com, you put in your website and then your top uh, four or five competitors, you can also see their uh, traffic compared to yours. And that's very informative as well. The power of competitive intelligence is that it helps you to understand exactly where you stand within the marketplace. So as you can see, again, this is uh, GettyImages.com in comparison to Shutterstock. SXC.HU, Dreams Time. These are all stock photo sites that, as a graphic designer or a SEO person, you're probably very familiar with these sites. Now, if you're in real estate, this is another vertical, you can see. Um, the difference between uh, Century 21, Coldwell Banker, Realtor.com, Remax, and Zillow. And as you can see, um, over time, I'm going to highlight this. You can see that Zillow is garnering more traffic than uh, Century 21, Realtor.com, Remax and Coldwell Banker. So this is a nice example of even another vertical so you can see exactly how Compete.com helps with um, competitive intelligence gathering. So you can see uh, Realtor and Zillow are highlighted in the yellow. The, the the data again, but you can look at actually, actually let me go back here. Um, one thing I want you to take a take a look at this is over time. Um, you have three months, six months, one year, and two years. So 
you do have that flexibility, that part of the tool, like when you're comparing your uh, comparing different sites to yours, you want to make sure that you do take advantage of the time frames there as well. Comparing key metrics with your competitors can bring immense insight. It can definitely uh, remove any complacency that you may have had, or it could show you that you're definitely on the right track, you're ahead of the pack, in the middle of the pack, or eating everyone's dust. It'll really give you perspective into your, your, your place. So um, another analysis to run is your competition's traffic sources and patterns. Um, some uh, companies may get most of their website from Facebook. Some may get most of it from a certain uh, website. Maybe they have a powerful uh, blog strategy. So when you compare their traffic sources to yours, you can actually uncover some key uh, digital strategies that's working for them that you can replicate that will definitely work for you. So here is um, traffic referrals for GettyImages.com. And you can see here that we have uh, work portals, miscellaneous, social media. It's all kind of charted out here for uh, Getty Images. Yep, so this is really cool because it gives you um, the numbers and also a graphical or a pictorial representation of the traffic and the sources. So as you can see here, Shutterstock has two times the traffic of Getty Images and they're getting the lion's share of their traffic from web portals and search, which lets me know that there's some terms that Getty Images can go after that it currently is not that it can gain more traffic from that are working. And then you can also uh, see here that is um, the direct traffic for Shutterstock and Getty Images is about the same. How, however, uh, Shutterstock really relies on uh, organic um, visibility, and that's something that um, Getty could consider pouring more resources into. So this data is really informative on what tweaks you can do to your strategy in order to, to make more of an impact online. So. So when you look at the Getty Images miscellaneous traffic sources, you can actually you can um, drill down even more. And if you look here, you can see that Getty Images has no visibility on allfreedownload.com. So um, this may be a website to consider um, getting on, investigating how Shutterstock is using all free downloads if they're using you know affiliate marketing or some kind of paid ads or um, if it's a directory or however it works it may behoove getting images to get on that site so there's a lot of really great insight that you can gain by drilling down into your competitions uh, traffic sources and so again just like with the online consumer surveys there are many cheap or free online tools you can use to conduct your competitive analysis. Um, I also, um, in addition to uh, Compete, Similar Web is also a great uh, source of competitor data. Uh, some other tools that I've used in the past include uh, SimRush, SpyFu, uh, WooRank, just, just, uh, just to name um, 
a few too. Competitive analysis is great because it helps to put your performance in context. It helps you to understand what your competitors doing, are doing differently and what you can do to catch up with them in certain aspects. And it also helps to uncover great opportunities for your business to grow and evolve. The next part of our presentation today is about tracking parameters. This is really interesting because it allows you to track uh, where your traffic is coming from and how uh, your traffic is interacting with your site. And we're going to just go more into that. So what is a UTM tracking parameter? It helps you to identify an incoming click from a campaign. And it's not a tag, and it's um, it's um, with it's usually within it's passed within um, the URL to to your to your site, and it gives you the reason why you use it is because it gives you precise control over how to categorize your marketing clicks. You can use tracking parameters to track the amount of clicks that you're getting from your email versus your social media versus uh, uh, the search engine, the type of search engine, and the phrase within that search engine. So as you can see here, these are all your, your traffic sources. So. Here we have um, a website, uh, a search engine, um, Bing, the word is coffee. And to when you go to Folgers Coffee, if you clicked on that link, these are uh, the, the UTM parameters. So it tells you Bing, cost per click, and the term is coffee. And this is a campaign that you're using to track it. It's called Folgers, non-branded. And that's the URL that um, a user is accessing your ad from. So breaking this down, Google Analytics uses the source, the medium, the term, and the name of the campaign, but it ignores um, the article ID part of the URL. Now, there is one caveat um, with AdWords. There is some automatic tagging that goes on, but as we uh, showed you before, uh, you you don't have to use every single uh, parameter. We're going to talk about this more in depth, as you can see here. So this is um, auto tag from uh, AdWords campaign. Okay, so going back to um, how Google Analytics categorizes your traffic sources. So direct means that a person directly typed your URL into the browser. Now referral means that it wasn't through a search engine and there's no uh, UTM parameter or any ad AdWords parameters either. So this is um, referrals can be um, a backlink, a blog post, now, a search engine uh, is another uh, category as well. And search engines does have um, uh, parameters, as paid does. And campaigns have parameters as well.
Okay, so when you set up a campaign so you can track these parameters, there's a total of five that you can use. You don't have to use all five, but you can use as many as three, four, or five. Now, as you can see, the source is you want to identify the advertiser, the site, the publication, etc., that's sending traffic to your property. So that could be uh, an example is Google, Yahoo, Bing, AOL. Medium, it could either be um, if you're tracking affiliate marketing or if you're tracking a cost per click campaign, a banner ad, an email newsletter. Um, another part is um, the campaign name. That's whatever you decide to, to name the campaign. And then the term, um, if you're using uh, PPC on a search engine like Google or Bing, um, and I hear the conversion rate, um, I know the conversion rate on Bing is, is very, very high um, for their uh, paid ads. Um, you can use the UTM term to track which keywords are yielding um, more sales through tracking your goals and this can actually help you to tweak your, your dollars so that you can have even an even more effective uh, PPC um, campaign. And then the UTM content, depending on uh, if you're uh, using a video or using uh, different links within the, your ad, you can um, yeah, or if you have two different links within your ad, you can use the UTM content to specify which one, which link is driving more conversion. And uh, this is really uh, cool information. So um, there, the best practices for you using UTM parameters to make the activity, um, the activity data usable is that you want to use just enough if you don't need the detail, don't include it. And skipping one or two parameters is normal. And it's very rare to use all five. And then you also want to make sure that your spelling is consistent, especially upper and lowercase letters. And the order doesn't matter. And uh, leave other parameters in the URL alone. So here are some examples of your uh, tracking parameters. So this is a display ad on Vogue.com, and this is a banner ad, and this is for the fall colors. This, this would be a great ad for a clothing line. This is what their, the, the, the URL sources would look like. So that's the source, Vogue. The medium is a banner ad and the campaign is fall colors. Now, now you can see the source is the same Vogue, the, the banner is a banner ad, but there's also uh, fall styles. You can see the article. So here's another example where the source is Facebook and it's a, a banner ad and the campaign, you're calling it false style. So, I mean, there's a lot of different options that you can use within Google Analytics to uh, track. One thing you also wanna make sure of when you're setting up um, this type of thing on in your Google Analytics to make sure that all the, the cases are similar to the URLs and make sure you test that. So here's another example. So th if this is an e-newsletter, you can see this is a different um, scenarios. You can track it per each month. 
Now, when you're tracking social media, um, if it's Facebook and the campaign is a brand page, you can see the power of this. If you're using meetup.com, if you're using Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Now, here are offline vanity URLs. You can always also use that as well. You can use this to track um, uh, flyers. If you have a certain URL you want to use in a flyer or a commercial, this is also helpful to use this. Yeah, this is pr pretty powerful stuff. So as you can see here, when you when you uh, designate the source, the the medium, the campaign name, you can also shorten those URLs and use those those offline vanity URLs and commercials, flyers, memes, different sources in order to. Uh, drive traffic and also at the same time track how people have came to your your website so when you are diagnosing um, issues with your data one good thing to do is to really look at everything side by side as you can see here um, you can use uh, Google's URLs, URL Builder and also um, access Google's uh, basic uh, documentation for support as you're troubleshooting. Now, we're going to talk about Universal Analytics. Why Universal Analytics? Well, Universal Analytics is, is really, really important and it's a great way to uh, gather data. We talked about this earlier where uh, using uh, Google Analytics you can track um, a lot of different important factors like unique visitors, page uh, view, uh, total page views, new versus existing, and a whole host of other um, statistics. And there is so much to uh, your analytics. A lot you can can measure. So, with the proliferation of devices, you have tablets, you have cell phones, smartphones, you have laptops and desktops, and you know all sort, sorts of uh, devices. It's, it's very important to track how people are accessing your site so that you can pour your resources into those things that are very important. So um, traditional web analytics fractures your data, but um, with uh, Google Analytics, you can actually track things in a more uh, seamless way. So universal analytics allows you to look at the visits, the people, the customers, and just you know look at the different ways that people access your site. So I know for like for instance um, if you are a emergency key company um, you'll more than likely find that most people are, are accessing your website through cell phones because most people who get locked out of their cars or uh, get locked out of their house and need a person to 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 get them into their car or home, or usually just have usually just have access to their cell phone. So you know it's it's really important to use analytics, universal analytics, so you can see where you need to pour in your resources. So we're going <laughs> going to uh, get some some technical lingo in here. So. Uh, user ID override. So, 
we live in a world with 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 a wide variety of people and devices and things and it's it's really cool to gather this this data and and be able to make sense of it to be able to analyze it and to use it in such a way where it makes sense and you can draw conclusions and make a lot of business decisions so Google Analytics gives you a measurement protocol for both um, online or, or, or digital traffic, foot traffic. It can track commercials. It can track um, traffic by email, traffic by flyers, a whole host of different things when you set it up correctly. So <laughs> this is this is really 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 cool. So. Um, this is uh, an example of the the uh, on how to use the the user ID feature that allows you to associate engagement data from various different um, devices here, and you can access this under um, the property. If you go to admin and properties, um, you can go under. Uh, uh, user management, tracking info to user ID, click there and get to this screen that you see here. This is just magnified. You have to agree to the user ID policy. And then you just want to um, put that new code um, within your Google Analytics. This is your Google Analytics um, code here. You want to just insert that underneath your Google Analytics number, but before the, the Google Analytics script tag ending. So this is your, your property um, code number that you want that uh, user ID code to be inserted under. Yeah, you want to replace that with your existing account ID. Now, you can um, get a user guide to the Google Analytics user ID by going to this website, www.zqi.me slash G-A-U-S-E-R-I-D. And so now you can see the data. Once you've been in, incorporated a tracking of user ID, you can see how many people who come to your website are anonymous or have um, identified themselves. And this is very helpful as you're doing remarketing or, or other uh, things too with uh, your, with, uh, you could do remarketing on, foot, on uh, Facebook, you could do remarketing on uh, Google, and uh, remarketing is, is really powerful tool. It allows you to um, take those unique visitors and you follow them around. Okay, so as you can see here, you can see the, the difference between the users that have enabled their IDs and those who have not. So um, the blue is those users who have enabled their IDs. The green are the anonymous ones. And so you can really see uh, the device overlap for those who have identi identified themselves and those who have not. And also you can track the revenue as well using the, these tools. You can see this Venn diagram here. Well, I think this is really important to note that when you use user ID, you can really track um, people by their device, 
And there's so many different devices people are using and it it just helps you because you know websites render differently and so you can definitely uh, use this to your advantage okay so with um, this user ID override that we we talked about you can really widen the amount of analysis that you use on your data. So instead of just it being a number, you can actually create a avatar of your your customer and create an even better experience. And so when you gather that data, it's no no longer who is that person. You have more um, information you know if they're you know what their gender is their age what their likes are and etc now customer loyalty data is great too uh, retention data is great um, for remarketing I touched on that a little bit that and campaign data for on and offline initiatives is really good um, content data to know which content by what authors on your website is really having an impact and also product categories and um, all, all that data falls into the diminishing widening uh, category so when you export this information from Google Analytics, you can export it as a CSV file, as you can see here, format it within um, a spreadsheet application like Excel or um, OpenOffice. And uh, you can really start to tweak your initiatives and your uh, website experiences to appeal to the, the target um, demographic. So you're moving beyond just um, just a code to you know an age and a gender and an education level it's your customers are becoming um, individuals that you can really cater to in a bigger and more powerful way when you use that data and so when you create those avatars you can um, also track authors too you can track uh, education level which authors appeal to which uh, education demographic whether it's high school PhDs masters etc and this is this is just really uh, really really cool so I mean you can see how your your products appeal to single individuals versus those who are are in uh, families and this information can really help you to tweak your website experience in a bigger way and to pour more resources into um, catering to those who identify more with your products and services in this scenario you can see here that uh, single booking travelers have a higher likelihood of, of, of spending money on this travel website so yeah so when you compare it the dollar amount versus how many goal completions you'll actually see family travelers have um, per transaction spend more money so um, the, the, the data does not lie it does not lie and as you can see here um, when you look at it just on the surface when you drill down and really analyze it really can open up some opportunities and inform your strategy in a more effective way. 
So when you um, are uh, importing data, you want to go to my account, then go to my property, and then go to uh, data import. And there's more directions on this at www.zqi.me slash G-A-D-A-T-A-I-N. Again, that's www.zqi.me slash G-A-D-A-T-A-I-N. And you can also visit Google Analytics Help for more um, examples on data imports on how to do that. So we talked about how user ID override can help you to, um, to basically look at your data from a more personable standpoint where it's, it's more than just um, a number. You can see the demographics, the gender, the, the uh, device they're using, their likes, their dislikes. And this actually helps you to, to widen the dimensions by which you're analyzing your data. And, and Google Analytics also gives you uh, a measurement protocol by which you can track in-store traffic, offline conversions, uh, physical sensors. There's, um, there's a lot of different ways as you get even more sophisticated with your technology that you can track um, traffic and you know when offline interactions happen you can send that event back to Google Analytics through the measurement protocol this is really really powerful and then it can be combined with the visitors original activity when you um, use the, the, the user IDs the user ID override and and other things and so this is this is really powerful to compl to paint a very complete picture of uh, your consumers consumer base. So as you can see here um, from Google Analytics, you can track uh, the, the event the event category, the type of action, what you want to label that as, and the event uh, value. And using this, you can group all offline data with the value client offline conversion is the value for all hits from offline traffic. So. It's really powerful for you to see and you can also change their status within the system depending on what it, within the Google Analytics depending on what actions they take online versus offline. And so the event value um, it can be set to the value that you establish for any offline activity that you're tracking through the use of a vanity URL. So here's an example. You have um, uh, you have a, a The per visit goal value, the form sign up, the offline opportunity. You could see the different um, sources and the mediums here on the left, and then you can see how um, those individuals interacted with on and offline um, marketing choices or activities. So you can see that um, the, the first goal is the form sign up. And if there was an offline opportunity, if the form sign up 
was for an event. You can track all of this information all within Google Analytics. So here's the second example. You can integrate your customer relationship management system with your offline sales as well. And with online sales, Google Analytics is called from the consumer's browsers, but with the offline sales, the consumer isn't present, so a different approach is used. And this is the, the best um, method is to, to make a server to ser server call to Google Analytics. And this, this method uh, requires um, developers to, to execute. And as you can see here, um, it's, it's coding intensive. It's coding intensive, but you definitely have this, this power within Google Analytics to integrate your customer relationship management system um, with your offline activity and it being tracked within um, Google Analytics through your um, ERP speaking to your Google. You can read more about this at www.zqi.me slash GAM protocol. That's www.zqi.me slash G-A-M-P-R-O-T-O-C-O-L. Okay, so more uh, universal analytics benefits is that it can handle uh, session timeouts, campaign timeouts, You can add uh, customer dimensions. Google Analytics is, is really powerful. There's a lot of, of ways that you can use Google Analytics to widen the dimensions and the depth and breadth of your data. You can go to www.zqi.me slash GA custom dimensions for more information about this. And now uh, the next session is enhanced e-commerce for Google Analytics. And you can use uh, enhanced uh, e-commerce capabilities to create funnel reports on your checkout. You can see where people drop off, whether it's at the, uh, the shipping, the payment, or um, the reviewing portion of uh, the shopping experience. So you can can um, definitely gather some really great insights so you can see um, how many people are com going to completion and where people are having problems. And so you can create uh, checkout funnel reports with Google Analytics. Um, you can also do shopping behavior analysis as well with Google Analytics. And this basically helps you to see uh, who, what visitors coming to your site are tide kickers and which ones aren't. This is really helpful, especially when you're looking at the sources and keywords that, that um, your, your traffic is using to get to your site so you can focus more on keywords where people are, have a higher likelihood of making purchases. And you can use uh, shopping behavior analysis to, to uncover um, that information about the traffic coming to your site. Now, you can see in this scenario, there's about 8 million um, sessions coming to the website. 
about two million of those are um, looking at products and about half a million of those are adding a product to their cart and about um, half a million are uh, checking out and then about um, 11 well 111,850 are completing their transaction so this is this is this is very very interesting information and is very informative especially when you're forming um, decisions and um, making uh, determination about where your uh, digital marketing strategy ought to go so we talked about this before there's uh, it's really interesting to see um, the drop-off here and you can see that there's 5.8 million shoppers with no shopping activity no card addition abandon the cart you can see track all of those and the shopping behavior analysis so the other thing that's really good about the shopping behavior analysis you can look at it by device so here you have um, the shopping behavior analysis by desktop tablet and mobile device and in this scenario you can see that um, the number of people um, making purchases is uh, largest on the desktop device you know tablet users start checkout twice as often and complete purchases 57 percent more often than overall users now when you look at pure numbers it looks like desktop is um, a larger um, population but if you look at the number of transactions for mobile um, for tablet users as a percentage of the total uh, tablet users you can see that they do purchase 57 percent more often than overall users as you can see here let me highlight this so you can see here in here so if you look at it as a percent right here tablet users purchase at a higher rate and the data lets me know to leverage remarketing more for tablet devices Mobile users start the checkout process more often than desktop, but complete purchase 40% less than overall users. Very interesting. So in this scenario, the tablet um, purchasers are definitely purchasing more. And you can see, you can see the difference between mobile users tablet users and uh, desktop users you can see the different percentages here now if you look at the the percent of transactions a mobile it's 0.82 percent versus 0.82 percent versus tablets which is 2.17 percent versus desktop which is 1.36 percent 
And so this this lets me know that you definitely need to fix the checkout experience because uh, the mobile and the desktop experiences are close to the same in their uh, conversion rate, and so that needs excuse me that needs to be fixed. So when you're doing your shopping um, behavior analysis, you can really drill down into uh, the no shopping activity, the no cart edition, the cart abandonment, and um, the sessions with product views, with the add to cart, with the checkout, and with a completed purchase. So when you're looking at that shopping behavior analysis, you can also look at it by device, by country, and as you can see here is that you have India has a lot of sessions with product views and so far as you can really see it okay coding is very important so this is about capturing events in the shopping funnel so there's a lot of different ways you can can capture it so here you see the product information here it's a diagonal strap gym bag and what categories accessories the brand uh, Google the variant is de denim and you want to track the action you want to capture a page view here so this is how you code in Google Analytics how to uh, code capturing events in the shopping funnel And so you have your hierarchical categories, and then you could do clicks, detail, add, remove, checkout, payment, refund, um, the various uh, actions. You could change this here to clicks, add, remove, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then the event. You can also uh, segment as well, as you can see, sessions with product views, add to cart. You can create an e-commerce section here, an e-commerce segment, and then you can also analyze the, the market basket. So this is uh, really cool. So there's a lot of different ways you can slice and dice uh, Google Analytics data. So you can do, uh, you can track the campaigns for different products and compare how they're performing, how they're uh, generating revenue. You can look at that compared to other products and really uh, drill down. You could create product lists. You can uh, track by category. Google Analytics is really, really powerful. And you can see how the performance of your site's merchandising is going as well. And see how much people want to view your, your product list. Even the, you might also like suggestions as well. And you can track the click-through rates, a bunch of stuff. So Google Analytics is really, really powerful. And you can see here from this data, um, the click-through rate for the product list is the highest for the you might also like category on this website.
and you can also track the revenue generated from each product category and this can help to inform your uh, your inventory strategy as well um, you can uh, use Google Analytics to track all of this information And you can uh, figure out which is, which products or product lines are most popular, which ones are added most to the cart, and which ones are purchased the most by using uh, Google Analytics to track product category and product lists. Now, uh, internal marketing are. Uh, special promotions, internal coupons, uh, things of that nature that you use to, uh, to, your, to the traffic that you already um, have access to, that you own. And uh, this is something that you can also track using uh, Google Analytics as well. As you can see here, um, your internal promotions um, names are here and you can track um, how how many views your promotion gets how many clicks through and the, the click-through rate and how much uh, how many transactions and how many how much revenue generated by those total transactions in the various categories of different internal promotions so as you can see here the different promotion names and the click-through rate on those promotions and the uh, number of transactions per click. You can see here that the drinkware campaign is generating some good revenue there. You can compare the different uh, scenarios So internal promotions, um, I know that in, you know, my, my clients often run internal promotions and this is a great way to, to track, um, track those things there. Uh, and you can just, you know, go to the internal promotions part and pick what medium that campaign is happening happening in and just configure uh, your Google Analytics you can also track coupons as well if you're using uh, coupons online or offline coupons you can also track um, affiliates too if you're if you're running ads on other websites as well. You can um, track your, your affiliates and also affiliate marketing if you have affiliates for your site. Um, you can also do shopping behavior analysis on your remarketing efforts. So this is basically taking those who have abandoned Remarketing is good for those who have abandoned their shopping cart initially and tracking how um, they come back. So um, this is how you would use dynamic attribute linking and uh, to do remarketing. 